What is good, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with the Tesla spy and a couple of other tickers and break down what's happening with the economic calendar moving forward. What's going on with the overall market? You should be watching for as time progresses. But before I begin to this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo and deposit $100, you're guaranteed seven free stocks. It offers very soon in just about 11 days from now. Anyways, for the market right now, SPY is kind of shuffling in this uh, very important zone. So I'm going to break down more information about this. Just know that right now, uh, we have Waller from the Fed giving a speech. Uh, and then later on, we don't really have much else coming out for the remainder of the day. Uh, we have more Fed speakers going into next week, but that's all that's happening so far. Looking at SPY, we have a very, very interesting trend right over here. So SPY pushed all the way up towards this... 531.5 area went all the way up here then we got this big red bar over here which led us to actually kind of coming down quite a bit before we start to rebound and since then i do believe that spy is still favoring uh the potential that th there's a top right over here and we're going to see a little bit of downside at least from this point on now is it still possible that we get one more little attempt to push later on we come back into the zone next week and then we start falling Yes, that is still a strong possibility, uh, but I don't want to guarantee anything. It's also possible the top is in, at least for this temporary push, at this 529 to 530 zone, and then we're about to start falling from here anyways. So either way, I do anticipate some downside is very probable for SPY. We will see if, uh, as long as we don't break this high here, we're going to likely see a trend shift. So like I was saying in my earlier videos, we had this high here, we came down. If we establish a lower high or if the high is already in, we'll just wait and see. And then we could continue lower going into Monday and beyond to like 526 or so. If we were to, you know, kind of push a little higher, I mean, it, technically it's still possible. But then either way, if we fail to break the high up here, then we're going to likely continue to see this trend shift just like this. That is the most likely possibility that we are looking at, especially heading into next week. Now, to be bullish, you want to see it break 531.5 on SPY. We haven't really done that. We're not even close to that level right now. So right now, the, the odds do favor more downside later on. But we'll wait and see if we get one more pop or not. Overall, we are potentially dipping a bit, and we'll have to watch and see what happens. So for SPY, I do anticipate we're going to be dipping down to 528 soon. If not 526.6 uh, to 525, we might get one more pop later on during the day if not by monday and then start falling or we could even just fall from here but we'll be watching this very very carefully it looks to me like 531.5 is where the top is and that is going to be our temporary hold for tesla we're actually building some strength we are pushing a little bit up here we are looking a little bit more bullish but just be a little bit mindful of the fact that tesla has resistance at this 180 zone and then we also have 182 as resistance our support's at 176 175 and then 172 if we lose 172, we turn bearish. If we break past 182, we're going to turn even more bullish. We are attempting to push a little bit on Tesla, but just be very, very mindful of the fact that resistance is going to be kind of tough. And we did have good news, which helped to pump involving Tesla trying to open more or potentially being open to the possibility of opening data centers in China, not to mention uh, other things like that. So we'll see how Tesla does with this 178 resistance. It is kind of tight right now, so I might shuffle in this 178 zone for some time. But watch and see if we break this, if we start breaking out of this to get to 180. We'll see what happens from there. But I do see some potential for Tesla to push a little bit higher. But I'm not really counting on it to really explode or anything like that. I think it might push a little bit higher and start to shuffle at resistance. For NVIDIA, now NVIDIA kind of marks something I did call out in the markets. And that's the fact that there could be a temporary top being established and there might be some more downside potential. NVIDIA went, went up to 960, came all the way down. Uh, to these lower levels, push back up towards about the 950 area. Now we're kind of rejecting. So we're going to be watching the support at this 930 zone into the low 930s. And we have resistance at 937 and also at 945. There is a risk that NVIDIA is going to dip a little bit more. So just be a little bit careful. Uh, but watch our 20 EMA as our support zone. This is very close to this 930 area. Once we lose that, we'll turn more bearish. We haven't really lost that yet. So it's still holding some key supports. But we are showing signs that the trend is kind of shifting as we're making lower highs and lower lows. So just be very, very careful on the chart. For the QQQ, the triple Q is also kind of downtrending a bit. We had this high established at 454.75. We came down, made a lower high at 453. And if we continue to fall, we're going to be watching this 451 support. If we lose this, we're going to be dipping all the way down to the 4. 
50 area, if not lower. So right now the trend is kind of favoring us kind of dipping a little bit more. Now, could we push a little bit higher and try to retest 453 one more time by next week and then maybe reject? It's always a possibility. But for now, the trend is favoring that we might may we may dip a little bit more and we'll be watching to see how that ends up progressing as time goes on. For Apple, we're kind of on a slight decline right here. We have this 189.3 support, 190.5 is resistance, kind of shuffling in this range, but there is a risk that this could actually dip a little bit. So watch for that. And then we also have, let me just double check a couple more things. Uh, Coinbase is showing some strength right now. So we're actually trying to break and test this 207 area. If we break this, look for a 211. There is some strength in the chart right now. So I'm going to be looking for more potential upside. For Amazon, I'd be a little bit careful because we have resistance at 185. We've struggled to break through that. We have support at 183. I think we might just shuffle between 185 and 183 for the majority of the day. For Meta, we're trying to rebound a bit, but make sure you watch this range. We have resistance at 472 now, and we have support at 469. We're kind of stuck within this area, so we'll see if we can end up breaking lower or not. But that's all I'm seeing, at least for the time being. For GameStop, we're actually on a downtrend right now. We also have this gap to fill all the way down here. This is going to be in the 17 area. For AMC, we're also dipping even more. We have resistance at 4, uh, basically this 4.4 zone. We also have support at 3.92 in lower levels. So we're still looking kind of bearish on AMC and GME. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens from here. Uh, once again, one highlight of my day would be Tesla as we're approaching the 178 resistance. We haven't been able to crack this yet. So like I said, it's kind of shuffling up here. It could shuffle in the 178. Uh, so we'll see how things go. We did, some, we did have some good news, so we'll just give this some time. But with that being said, guys, that's it for my intraday update. Hopefully this video was insightful and helpful for the people out there. As for SPY, we're seeing a lot of shop today. It is a Friday, so Fridays are full manipulation, at least because of all the uh, you know options expiring for today. So I expect more shop, by the way. I do anticipate more downside later on, but I'll, I'll be watching to see if we get one more pop on Monday or not. And we'll see how long we shop for in this range. So I'll be watching this very carefully. With that being said, I just want to say I uh, really appreciate every single one of you guys so much for watching my videos. I'll be back maybe in about two to three hours for another update, maybe around three hours from now. So I'm going to be gone for quite some time until I'll give you guys another update. Until then, we'll just continue to watch what the market does. One more thing I want to note is about the VIX. So for the VIX, we're still in a downtrend on the VIX, of course. We're not necessarily breaking out. But I find something very interesting that's going on. I wanted to just call this out real quick before I finish my video. One last thing. The VIX is notorious for trying to hold this 12.4 zone. And we're actually still kind of basing around here. And notice how every single time this year we did bounce off that area. So it kind of just goes to show that as of right now, it's still holding up in this range. And we'll see if we end up getting a bounce or not on the VIX. I'll be very, very patient because it doesn't really like to hold this level for too long. So we'll wait and see how things go. As for the markets, uh, it's very, very evident that we might be establishing a high on SPY at 531.5 from uh, just after CPI came out. And as of right now, we might be looking at some weakness, at least on the chart. So that being said, we'll see how things go. Uh, I'll be back in a few hours. Thank you all for listening, and I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you, and peace out.